Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and hi if you are new. Today I am sharing with you two projects that we did in the laundry room just to spruce it up and make it just a little bit nicer. These are super easy projects that you can do in your own home, so definitely make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy these types of renovation videos. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing before you go. And let's go ahead and jump right into the projects. So I definitely want to mention that if you have not seen my first laundry room renovation video, then definitely go and check that out so you can see how I took it from no paint and really gross to fully painted walls, trim painted, and everything like that. And then I knew that the next project I wanted to tackle in here was putting some storage in. So that is the first thing that we are doing today. I wanted a white cabinet in here that would hold all of my laundry detergent and things, but also something that wouldn't be too big and bulky and would fit really nicely with the space. So the first thing that we needed to do was take the doors off of the cabinet which I did and now we're putting a cleat on the wall and you want to drill this into the studs and this is a great way to one make sure that your cabinet is level on the wall but you also want to do this to give yourself a little bit of a ledge so that your cabinet can rest because I was going to be the one holding the cabinet on the wall while Jack attached it to the wall and there is no way that I could have held this cabinet up there without the cleat. And then after we put the cleat on the wall, then we needed to measure out with the level exactly where the cabinet was going. And then we went ahead and drew it with pencil lines. That way we knew exactly where to put the cabinet and that it was exactly level. Brown. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time. So the next thing that Jack is doing here is measuring exactly where to put the pilot holes in the back of the cabinet. He knew where the studs were on the wall and we wanted to make sure that we drilled this cabinet directly into the studs. So he is double checking, triple checking his measurements before marking the holes for the pilot holes. Basically, he's going to attach it from the inside. So he wanted to pre-drill some small holes just to make it a little bit easier. So why, so why? can't see me in this clip, but I'm actually on the back side of the cabinet, just holding it still while he drills these small holes into the back. And I was a total nervous wreck, but he is so much more handy with the power tools than I am. So this was super easy and definitely a great way to make sure that we got the holes exactly where we wanted them. Looking back at the good times before it all went down. So now we were ready to attach the cabinet to the wall and this is exactly where that cleat came in handy because I had to hold this up here while he screwed it in. And if you are not strong like me or you are also very short, then having a cleat like this really helps to hold the cabinet up so you don't have to do much lifting. We also put the level inside the cabinet. Obviously we couldn't really adjust it that much which is why we leveled the cleats. And then he is just going ahead and drilling the screws right into the studs, right through those pilot holes that he had already pre-drilled. to ask Jack he would probably say that this is one of the easiest projects that we have done and you can see that we removed the cleat we didn't get a little clip of that but we removed the cleat once the cabinet was hung up on the wall because we didn't need it anymore and then I was able to reattach the doors it's kind of tricky reattaching them because you want to make sure that they are both at the same height you want to get them as close to the center of the holes as possible and nice and tight that way they don't wiggle Jack had to kind of step in and recheck some of the holes because they were a little bit wonky and I wasn't quite strong enough to tighten the screws all the way. You can do this by hand or you can use an impact, whatever is easier for you. The 
next thing that I needed to do was fill the cabinet with some of my things just to kind of see how much it would hold and I was really pleased to see that I could get everything that was really heavy and everything that I needed to reach on a regular basis on the bottom shelf so that's detergent and fabric softener and dryer sheets and things like that and now I'm just going through some of my other miscellaneous household items just to kind of see what I want to put on the top shelf I mostly went with light bulbs and candles and just kind of random stuff like that and the stuff on the top shelf is not super heavy so this definitely held a ton of stuff So I did not get any footage of installing the cabinet knobs on this cabinet, but if you want to go check out my kitchen video where I did it on the kitchen cabinets, I used the exact same knobs as I did in the kitchen. So I will have that video linked down below so you can see how we installed the knobs on this cabinet. It was the exact same. And now we are going to move on to project number two, which is Wayne's coating. And I was so excited to do this for two reasons. One, I wanted the Wayne's coating below that hook rack so that I could protect the Wall and it was so much easier to wipe down when I have purses and backpacks and things that would be hanging up there. So much easier to wipe down. Also, Wayne's coating just looks so cute. So I was very excited to do this project. So we did some measuring and we figured out that we needed to trim down one of the panels. And there are many different kinds of Wayne's coating that you can get. We decided to go with the smaller sections. They were much easier to work with, but also these were made of vinyl. And most Wayne's coating is made of like an MDF material or some kind of wood material, but the vinyl is way better quality. And it was also paintable, which is great. But I just think that it is well worth a few extra dollars to get this pro product instead of the other product. And then we also had to do the same thing for the chair rail on top. We just needed to trim a small section off. Are so many different ways that you can go about installing this and we decided that we were going to take the easy way by using liquid nails one because we know that we are not going to remove this liquid nails is super adhesive so you definitely don't want to use it unless you're a hundred percent sure that you love what you are putting up but it was way easier than renting a compressor and some kind of nailer to nail it into the wall. But that is another option, especially if you already own something like that, then you may wanna go that route. But this was super easy. We just used the caulking gun and the liquid nails and Jack went ahead and did that for me. And then I was in charge of lining all of the panels up. And these ones were the best to use because they are tongue and groove. So they have a little notch where they slip in. It's pretty much foolproof. This is another one of those projects that I thought was so easy and it went by so fast and I will have all of the products that we bought for this down in the description box including the cabinet because all of this stuff is from Home Depot and all of it was super inexpensive.
the last couple of pieces were definitely a little bit tricky, especially right up against that other wall. But once we got all of the panels in, then it was time to put up the chair rail. So Jack went ahead and put a line of this glue on the back and then we were ready to stick it up. And because this piece was all one length, it took both of us to get it perfectly lined up where we needed it to go. And this vinyl wainscoting came with the chair rail and a baseboard set. So it has grooves that are designed to just slip right on top. Honestly, guys, this was such an easy project. I was really concerned when we started it that it was going to be so hard, but it turned out so great and it was very easy to install. Then the next thing that we had to do was caulk all of the lines between the existing wood and the drywall and the wainscoting. And so instead of using the caulking gun, we found this paintable caulk that was in a squeeze tube, which Jack said that it was so much easier to squeeze out. Sometimes the caulking gun can be a little unpredictable. So he is just spreading it on the surface here and then I'm taking a wet finger and I am going across the bead of caulk and just smoothing it out and making sure that it looks nice and clean. You definitely wanna have a damp rag or something that is wet nearby, that way you can make it nice and smooth. To have a good time Now my life's an adventure And you're the reason why We're far away from the city lights So we're small under the night sky It's just a stool but I don't mind You could never If you guys saw my kitchen renovation video where I did the backsplash, then you guys will know that I had to caulk around that area as well. And I told Jack that I thought this was so much easier than what we had to do when we did the backsplash just trial and error and the more you do something the better that you get at it so we definitely have learned some of these tricks along the way but I think that that is half the fun of being DIYers is that every time you do a project you just get better and better and more confident. Once I was done with the caulking, it was time to paint and you definitely do not want to skip this step if you are using the vinyl wainscoting. You want to use a primer that is a bonding primer, meaning a primer that will help a latex paint or a water-based paint to stick to the vinyl. This is because if you don't use this primer, there's a pretty good chance that your paint will just wipe right off. And so we bought this small little quart size thing of paint for about $9, $10. And we can use this on other things in the house as well. Well, it's a great thing to have if you are planning on painting over surfaces where it is harder for paint to stick. And then I went through the whole area with a brush and I did it twice. So you're only gonna see me do it once here. But I did decide to go over with the primer twice just to make sure that I covered it really well. And then I decided to go back with the actual paint and use a roller for that. And the actual paint that I use matches all of the trim in the house and I will have that paint linked down below as well. It is the brightest white paint that you can possibly buy and it is in a semi-gloss finish. And here is what the laundry room looks like now that it is totally finished. And you guys, other than a window treatment in here and something on that window, I am in love with the way that this laundry room looks. 
It is so crisp and clean and efficient and it is not cluttered in here. I love that I have a rack now where I can hang some things up and I really feel like it is starting to turn into a true mud room. We can come in this door and immediately dump our coats and shoes and things like that. I just love how this turned out and I think that the wood door looks so nice with that wood rack and then all of the white matches really nicely. I just really, really love how it turned out and genuinely Genuinely, these two projects were so easy. I really was expecting them to be so much harder, but they look so good for how easy they were. I was kind of shocked. But anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy these renovation videos. And definitely make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you are not already. And I will see you guys again very soon in a brand new video. Bye, guys.